juice that's really hot, it wouldn't be like this taste like coffee that kind of rises up. So like the wine, everything's like wine with the end of X. Coffee done right is just like, wow, this tastes like X, which is really disorienting when you sort of like are drinking it normally and a little bit over roasted and a little bit of coconut just all tastes kind of like burnt. This is really a pretty bad note. Um, all right, I think that's all I have to say about coffee. Um, oh, um, just a brief aside on caffeine in general. Um, on like tea, related, uh, tea and coffee related forums, you'll, get big, you'll see big arguments about um, whether or not tea has caffeine. Um, because it has tea and yerba mate, which is one of the few other things that has ca caffeine, has um, mate. And uh, chocolate, which contains caffeine, actually contains the abromine. These are all very, very similar ch chemical compounds, just like big molecule, like one thing is twisted, like five degrees. Um, and you get big arguments as to whether or not they actually have different biological effects. And there's plausible reasons that they might, but they're going to be similar. Um, mate is supposed to make you more kind of alert than physically alert. Um, so I On that. First, decaf doesn't really exist. Like, no one's ever found a way to actually really decaffeinate coffee or tea. Um, but mostly decaf is very, very easy to make. Um, actually, for tea it is. For tea, you take some tea, you steep it for about 20 seconds, throw out that water, and you steep it again. The um, caffeine is very water soluble, so it will dissolve out everything. Um, and the tea will still taste fine if you just keep it a second time. So there you go, you can decaf tea to save you some money if you would otherwise have bought it. Um, Decaf coffee, cheap decaf coffee is probably carcinogenic. Um, <laughs> it's basically steeped in like formaldehyde and weird shit. Um, I, there have been a lot of studies like, wait, should we like actually be, like make this legal? Um, and then better decaf is actually this weird process where they um, they <coughs> mash up coffee really fine, uh, like green coffee, and they make kind of like steep green coffee, and then throw out all the beans. And then take some other beans and like do some complicated decaffeinating processes to them. And then infuse the flavor of the first beans into the second beans. <laughs> so it's, it's very complicated, fairly expensive, and requires twice as much coffee. But it doesn't involve using any weird chemicals, so it's kind of like the first thing. So this confirms that decaf is not eating. Yeah, and it also doesn't taste like as much. Whereas decaf tea like, tastes like still like the same thing. Um, but also, what's the point? If you want to sleep in Greek after dinner, we can preserve you and have a drink coffee or find something else. Um, booze. So, uh, booze is very old. Um, beer is almost certainly older than bread, and um, probably, like, opinions differ as to whether or not people were drinking beer before the advent of agriculture. Um, like, what little starch they would find if people were just making beer. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, estimations are like 11 and 12,000 years ago. Uh, uh, the, like, a lot of fairly complex brewing techniques and a lot of, like, the common distinctions in beer have been figured out by the Egyptians about, like, 2500 BC. <laughs> beer is bloody old. Um, wine is not that much less old. Um, wine is, was first, uh, figured out in China, I think. Um, so it's about as old as, like, Chinese established civilization, um, probably, like, 6000 BC. Um, spirits... Spirits are complicated. Spirits um, were invented in like North Africa or, the, or Arabia in about 808. Uh, so they're, they're the UK. Um, by the way, unlike with caffeine, alcohol is alcohol. Um, any alcoholic beverage contains a lot of ethanol. Um, the reason that people have, like people will sometimes say, oh, um, like oh, don't drink tequila. Tequila will really fuck you up. Um, the two factors that act, that make alcoholic drinks behave differently on you are um, water. Um, hangover is almost entirely dehydration, and drunkenness is substantially dehydration, because alcohol just pumps water out of all of you, like, especially your head. That's one of the things. So drink a lot of water in your drinking, and the effects will be a lot weaker. Um, 
It's also conditors, which are like other things that happen in fermentation, like the yeast spit out weird shit. That doesn't actually make it work wrong, but it'll like they, they can be toxic, they can do bad things. Um, this is why this is why it is true that a hangover from red wine or whiskey is gonna be stronger than a hangover from the same amount of alcohol consumed with vodka or white wine. Uh, like the stuff that makes it dark is also gonna keep wine separate. Um, so beer. Beer can be made of pretty much any starch. Um, it's often made of mostly barley or a combination of barley and wheat that you'll see like in be weirder beers or free beers, just like sorghum, just like rice, just like um, I don't really understand why this is. I think it's just kind of a very, very well-established preservative, but pretty much all beer in the modern world is made of hops, which is um, an herb. It's actually the, the green immature flower of a tree. Um, this growing only in a few places, like Northern Germany and Washington State. And that's like it. Um, so hops is pretty much all there. It's good beer, so it's a herbal flavor. One of the biggest distinctions in beer is ale versus lager. Um, it's fundamental, it's different species of yeast. One of them ferments ferments on the top and top of the air, of the top of the mash. Uh, the other one ferments on the bottom. This is fermenting, um, basically grains have been boiled and mashed up as they're sort of infused into the water. Um, so, uh, typical ales, they tend to be darker, they're usually more interesting, they can be stronger. Um, IPAs, they do pale ale, Belgian beers, which are made from wild yeasts that are usually pale yeasts. Um, wheat beers, most of the sort of weirder American beers, like Dogfish Head, pretty much only makes ales. Um, you'll, get very, you'll get strong things like double, like Imperial IPAs, where it's like 12% alcohol instead of usual, like four and a half. Um, I think actually someone in Scotland did some crazy yeast engineering and made 40% alcohol beer. That's, that's wacky shit, and they're also charging $100 a bottle for it. Um, and then, lagers are Pilsner, Bach, um, Porter, and Stout have actually in the last hundred years switched from being ales to being lagers. They like, do all the same steps and then put a different piece to it. They're milder now than they were. Um, but yeah, so basic beer distinctions. I can't brew beer, I don't really have any demos to give you, so that's kind of all I have to say about it. Um, Wine, also, I don't have that much to say about, especially because wine, unlike the rest of these, has a really strong connection to the fine dining industry, which is made of nothing but money. So there are like wine science they establish for you. You go to UC Davis, you can actually get a degree in enology. Um, it's, so there's a lot of things that have been said about wine, I don't know if any of them. Um, but like very, very straightforward, simple variables, like uh, what you call wine, what properties wine has depends on where it's from, what species of grape you use, whether or not you, you, uh, so you let, let it ferment with peels or not, which is what makes the red or white difference. It's not red or white grapes, it's all always red grapes. Um, whether you mix or not, um, things like that. By the way, um, champagne and sparkling wine, like Asti, Prosecco, um, those are made by adding sugar or starch when it's bottled. That sugar or starch ferments, produces more carbon dioxide, has nowhere to go, so it about, uh, diffuses into the liquid. By the way, um, nicer beers also do that. Um, cheaper beers, like your PBR, they just inject carbon dioxide into it. Um, you get like nice weird ales, they're going to, um, especially like beers that are corked, they're usually, they put yeast into it. Or they put more yeast and more sugar, or something like that, into the bottle and ferment. And it produces weirder flavors that are not always good, but interesting. So that's pre fermentation, bottle fermentation. Um, spirits. This is where I'll get back to. Um, so the unless you're unless you're a crazy Scottish engineer, you're never going to ferment anything that's got more than about fifteen percent alcohol because yeast dies when there's about fifteen percent alcohol. It just kills it. They they, they they produce their own device. Um By the way, that's thirty proof. All you guys know this, but proof is um, double the percentage. I don't know why it used to be some complicated imperial unit, but they just average it to double the percentage. So. Um, 